from the fastest way to server hop to a way to literally skip islands. Here are 15 of the fastest ways to go from level 1 to 2550 in Blocks Fruits. When you first start playing Blocks Fruits, you'll start on the starter island. In this phase, it's important to optimize your XP gain. And to do this, you'll be required to kill NPCs, bosses, server hop, upgrade your stats, and get better fruits. But in order to make this process so much faster, your first goal should be to get a good elemental fruit, preferably a magma or ice fruit. These fruits will allow you to farm NPCs without them being able to hit you. You just need to be one level above them in order for this to work. And at this stage, don't bother to get a better sword or fighting style, just stick to the fruit. Remember, you're still in the first C, so when you get a good elemental fruit, your next primary goal should be to work your way up to lightning fruit, since it's the best fruit for the first C. When leveling up, you'll need to move from island to island to make the process much faster. But many of you don't know that you can actually skip a few islands at the beginning, which will save you so much time. When you first spawn, immediately get a free boat and head to Fountain City Island. There you'll be able to kill NPCs that are a way higher level than you are, which means much more XP. But how? There's a special wall on this island. Why is it special? Well, it gives you the ability to kill NPCs without them being able to hit you, even if you're only level 1. You just need something to lure them to this wall, jump to the other side, and hit them until you kill them. This is such an important trick, yet many of you still don't do it. Once you get a good fruit for the sea you're in, it's important to stick to it. If you've got a magma fruit in the first sea, don't switch it for another fruit unless it's lightning. Why? Well, you'll lose all the mastery you had on that fruit, which benefited you way more than a new fruit will for who knows how many levels. You'll certainly not lose them, but you will start from zero mastery on that new fruit. The rule is the same for swords and fighting styles. Pick one that's good and never change it. It's absolutely key to know how to fight, and it's not just about swords, fighting styles, and fruits, but it's also about technique. Most of your weapons are area of effect weapons, which means the damage is done to the field rather than to a single NPC at a time. When doing quests, there's a technique that will help you do these way faster. Once you start a quest, go from one NPC to another and just hit them once to lure them at you. When you get a few of them chasing you, start using your moves and hits on them. Because of the area of effect, with one move you will deal damage to all of them, and it'll take you way less time to kill them than if you were to do it one by one. Once you're level 105, you'll be able to start a quest to kill the boss yeti. In the frozen village, this quest gives you 20,000 XP, and if you use a code, it's double. But there's actually a special technique that'll make sure you kill a yeti without dying. All you need to do is hit and dash. The dash on the ice is longer than the dash on normal ground, so there's no way he'll hit you even once, which makes him perfect for grinding. So take the quest, kill yeti, server hop, and repeat. You know things are getting serious when you're able to start a quest with the vice admiral, but I'll show you the best way to kill him every time without dying. Most of you don't know about this trick, especially if you just started. All you need to do is lure him down the stairs, behind the left wall, and stand just below the stairs. You'll be able to hit him while he won't be able to hit you. If you've got double XP, this quest will get you 830,000 XP alone. For those of you who underestimate the prison island, just know that it can be your ticket to the second sea. Prison island has three bosses, and you'll need to be level 230 to fight all of them. With double XP, they will give you millions of XP, and you will level up super fast. Another important thing to know is that you can hit two of the bosses through the wall. So just wall trap them, kill, repeat, and slowly work your way into the second sea. When you finally reach the second sea and have a proper reason to buy Buddha, be careful when awakening it. You're still poor and should watch your wallet, so there's no need to fully awaken your Buddha. What you want to do is complete the raid once and awaken Buddha's Z move, which is shift ability. This is the only move you need and probably the only one you'll be using anyway. Shift ability gives you higher defenses and more importantly, a way longer reach for your weapon. Then start upgrading your fighting style or a sword depending on what you prefer. And believe me, you'll become unstoppable. The next one is an incredible way of leveling up. This makes it possible to level up for your friends without them having to do much. All you need to do is collect as many fragments as possible, a few thousand preferably. Then go buy a raid ship and start a raid against order. This is a great way to carry your friends and level up for them, because five of you can collect fragments, get into a raid, complete it, and get three level ups. How? Well, order grants the player three level ups, except if you're over level 2000. Then you get two level ups, but still, if you're at level 2548 and kill order, you'll become max level. The same thing can be done if you're in the third C, just instead of order. You'll need to defeat Rip Indra, which is slightly more difficult, but still doable. Let me go ask my friends if they'll help me level up. Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't have any friends. There are some pretty cool shades you should get in the first C. If you go to the Fountain Island and defeat a boss named Cyborg, you'll get the rare accessory called Cool Shades, which are just some black glasses. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, these are not just some black glasses. These glasses are a must-have. Why, you ask? Well, they give you 100 more energy, 100 more health, 7.5% more damage, and 17.5% faster movement speed. And all you have to do is literally kill one boss, which is super easy. These glasses will make your leveling up process way faster. But if you don't want to do all the grinding for the true triple katana. Don't worry, I've got something similar that's completely
completely freeze. If you go over to the ice castle and head inside of it, there will be a boss known as Awakened Ice Admiral. You'll need to kill him, but be careful since he's level 1400. But once you do it, you'll get a hidden key, which you can use to get a secret chest located under the stairs. That will give you a sword called Ren Goku. Even though Blox Fruits is based on the One Piece anime, for some reason Blox Fruits developers decided to include a sword from the Demon Slayer anime. Still, Ren Goku is a pretty good sword, and for some reason my character is holding it really suspicious. Anyways, you'll pass through the second C super easily with this sword, so I definitely recommend you get it. But here's another important thing many of you may forget to do. I'm talking about Race Awakening. Race Awakening puts you way ahead of others, and gives you tons of benefits that will help you out while grinding. To awaken your race, you'll need to complete specific quests, puzzles, and trials, depending on the race you want to get. Once you awaken your race, it'll enhance their mobility, reduce your cooldown, improve defense, aid in PvP and PvE combat, and much more. But before you head to awaken your race, make sure to fulfill all the requirements needed. You need to be in the third C, any race V3 if you're upgrading to V4, defeat Rip Indra at least once, have a mirror fractal, have found the blue gear on Mirage Island, and even more. But yeah, even though it might be exhausting to awaken your race, it's undoubtedly worth it. Jaw Shield is probably one of the best accessories you can get for leveling up. It's a rare accessory that can be obtained after completing five quests from the player hunter NPC, and then talking to an NPC called Takomura, who's located at the castle on the sea. And this accessory gives you some crazy good perks. These include plus 500 energy, 250 health, plus 12.5% melee damage, plus 10% on defense from melee attacks, and to top it all off, plus 50% movement speed. This accessory is a must have. And even though these sound like tiny numbers, you won't believe how important they are and how big of a difference they make. This is what separates you from being a high level and a tremendously high level. You probably didn't know that one of the best accessories to use in the first C is Black Cave. To get this accessory, go to Marine Fortress, climb on top of the right tower, like the rightest tower, and then go down. Down there you will find a parlous NPC, and do you know what you can get from him? Yep, you guessed it, a Black Cave. Black Cave costs 50,000 belly, and it's one of the rare accessories that has no requirements. You just need 50,000 to buy it, and that's it. Black Cape bumps up both your health and energy by 100, and gives 5% more damage on any attack. And let me know down below, was this something you got in the first C? But here's another accessory that's OP for leveling up. It's called Pilot Helmet, and it's not that hard to get. This accessory buffs your movement speed by a whopping 130%, speeds up your health regeneration by 10%, and bumps up your health and energy by 250. Honestly, this is one of my favorite accessories in the entire game, and to get it, you just need to defeat stone bosses in the port town. Then you have a 5% chance of getting it every time you kill a boss. And if you don't get it the first time, just server hop until you do. There you have it, 15 tricks that will help you reach max level in Blocks Fruit super fast. Make sure to subscribe and watch this video on the screen. Or don't, I can't tell you what to do.